Okay, so the last time um, we started uh, using the e-commerce plugin, we spent some time in the settings, which we're not quite done yet. We're going to go back to look at a few more settings, and then we'll start to create products and all that good stuff. So let's go back to our settings for the store. Under settings menu, store settings. We already looked at general, we looked at admin, taxes, shipping, payments. Okay, we're on uh, checkout. Let's look at checkout. A few important settings are right here. Force user registration. Users can check out without an account or they must have an account. So that's one that you're going to need to decide what works best for you. What this is saying, the default is a person does not need to create an account before they buy your product. That lets them go through the checkout process faster. If you instead say a person has to create an account before they check out a product, well, the good and the bad about that is that then they create an account, they'll be able to buy products easier later. But the bad about it is they'll have to interrupt themselves at that moment to create an account which means that they will get an, a registration email that they have to click on and confirmation and all of that. So whichever of those you like um, is fine, but the fastest way to, for people to buy your products is going to be leaving it on the first one. If you turn on the second one, also here this will automatically activate the membership option in a different settings screen. In the old days, just uh, a few versions ago, what would happen is that people would activate, users must register, but then they never turned on this other option. So there's no way for the person to register, and you have to register to buy. So catch 22, no one could buy your product because no one could register. Now the good news is if you turn that on, it'll automatically then allow registrations. What else? Shipping, same as billing. Um, Okay, this one I would recommend you change. The default is a person fills in their, their billing address and then they have to re-enter a shipping address. Most of the time you see on a website you're going to buy something and it asks you for shipping and billing address. And when you fill in one, there's an easy way to fill in the other one. I don't want to type my address twice. Even though it takes a few seconds, anything that annoys your customers you want to eliminate. So I would say turn on this check mark uh, or this radio button so that people can then automatically take what they already wrote under one area and apply it to the other area. They can change it if they want, but this is a great time saver for people. Then we've got here encryption. Force users to use SSL encryption or allow the site to be used insecurely. Question? So they do have the option to change. They do. If you turn this one on, uh, they can choose for it to copy, or they can write something else. Yes? I have a message that you said that reserve duplicator install files have been detected in the root directory. You can ignore that for the moment, because that matters more when we're going to make the backup. So we'll fix that a little bit later. So That's, just don't touch it. Yeah, just don't touch it for the moment. This one about encryption sounds scary, so we should probably turn on SSL. Actually, no. You don't want to turn that one on yet, because this needs a little bit of setup. Let me uh, write my notes here, as usual. Uh, the first item here about SSL sounds good. The opposite is use the site insecurely. That sounds bad. But the problem with simply turning it on... so. Settings, store, uh, checkout. Do not turn on force SSL unless you have SSL activated on your site. SSL is secure socket layer, so um, extra feature you paid for when you bought your site. So at GoDaddy, at Bluehost, etc., 
you would pay for this extra feature of security called SSL. That's that little lock that you see when you visit a website. On the top left corner of the address bar, you, you often see a little lock, a little green lock or some other icon. And I see that especially when I'm going to log into a site like my bank, or I'm going to log into Twitter or somewhere, there's a, there's a lock on the top left corner. You can probably see it in most places. Let's go right here, uh, Bank of America, just to be obvious. Uh, it's a bank, so it should have security. There it is. Now, many sites nowadays have this security, and it's not free. Uh, us at the moment, we don't have the lock, but it's not a real site yet. And even if we uploaded the site to a real server, you don't get that security. You don't get that lock automatically. You have to pay extra. And the price is like $50 to $100 per year, depending on your provider. But people expect to see that lock, especially when I'm going to sign in and do passwords and credit cards and all of that. So that's why this is telling you, use SSL. This can cause warnings for your users if you do not have a properly configured SSL certificate. So at the moment, we will not activate use security. We haven't paid for it, and it's not a real site. After you upload yourself to Bluehost, and you pay for the SSL service at Bluehost, and you activate the SSL service on Bluehost, then you would turn this on and make your site more secure. Yes? If you're using PayPal, then that would matter, would it? Exactly. Very good point there. Ultimately, the credit cards are currently being processed through PayPal, and PayPal has the full best security. So for a lot of... Uh, for a lot of us, it wouldn't even matter to go off and buy the SSL security certificate because PayPal will take care of the, the credit cards. For double security, um, it's better. So our notes here. You purchase SSL and set it up with GoDaddy. Bluehost, etc. After you do so, come back to the settings and activate. Perhaps not 100% necessary because we're using PayPal as our credit card processor. has some of the best security. Price for SSL. It ranges. I haven't looked at it very recently, but prices I often see is about $50 to $99 per year. So that way you can have the full security on your site. Now you will be taking people's home address, and you will be asking for people's email, and that kind of information, that still would be good to be secured, because what SSL does is it encrypts the connection. The default settings of the internet are that information travels from one computer to the other unencrypted. So for, you know, 25, 40 years of the internet, it's all unencrypted from one computer to another. In the last three years, more and more websites are activating security. You see the security lock even on Google, Google search. Nowadays, see, security there, and it didn't have it before. So more of these websites are activating security to encrypt your connection. It's not on by default. It wasn't on by default for 99% of the lifespan of the Internet. be necessary for full security compliance because you are collecting home addresses, emails, personal info.
So we will not activate SSL because we can't. Uh, you would do so later. Check out form fields. Here is what we will be asking for people to fill out when they buy something. There is a section that asks for the person's billing or contact details. Notice any of these can be changed however you want. We're then going to be asking for their first name, last name, address, etc. Then a little section for shipping address. We activated uh, this one over here, enable same as billing checkbox. So they will be able to select, once they've filled in this first billing info section, they click a button and then the shipping gets filled in if they want, or they can change it. Sometimes that happens. A person is going to buy something and get billed at an address, but then ship the items to another address. If we wanted to ask for a person's last name before the first name, there's a way to do it. Can anyone figure out how to do it from the screen? Yep, this little drag icon, you can drag it and move the order. If you want last name to be asked first, just drag it from this little gripper and then put it in the right order. So I could put here, for example, billing info, shipping info, anything you want. We have then show this box yes or no, to so display the box asking for that information, yes or no, and we have mandatory. Uh, we need to know the person's state, or we need to know their last name, so you can turn those on or off. It's kind of interesting, state is not mandatory, but I would turn it on. Technically, most people know that they should fill all of that in, but you might as well turn it on. Here it's calling it postal code. Most of us know it as zip code. Phone, email. That's how I want it. Different days and I run into people that don't have emails, and that's a real challenge for me. Fascinates me, but we can easily make it non-mandatory. But yeah, um, depending on the demographics, there there is groups that wouldn't have an email, perhaps. In that case, maybe turn on phone as some other way to get in contact with people. Now, these are the things we're asking for. I also would like to ask for people's Twitter address. Obviously, not everyone's going to have one, but I want to ask for their Twitter address. There's a way here to add more fields. What do you think we can add more fields to ask for? Plus, plus right there. So if you click plus right below it, you will get a new field. I want to say after the email, I want to ask for people's Twitter address or social media. So click plus and you get a new box. Social media URL. So just for fun. Not required, um, but I will show it. I can then ask for what kind of data in this little box. Yes. How do you how do you add one? How do you add a new box? You can click on the little plus sign on the right side. So here I'm asking. Uh, okay, write your text, any text, or give them give them a text area. That's going to be a box with more space for them to write. So what that one could be used for is you could say questions. You could say special instructions and give the people a little box here under text area, a few lines for them to write something. We have heading also. This lets you divide up these sections. So I have um, billing info, shipping info. Maybe I could group these into a heading of contact. Contact info. 
so I can make a new heading and move it up here. Contact info, phone, email, social media. You've got select boxes with options. It can get pretty complex. Radio buttons, check boxes. Victor, are all of these searchable fields including the text, text uh, right? Searchable in where? Uh, if I were doing a database and export. Yes, yes. They would be uh, entries added to the database under rows and columns, which could then be searchable, export. Um, I don't need any of those extra fields. If you want to remove one, you can click minus to remove. But let's say, for whatever reason, I don't want to ask for people's last name. There's no way to minus that, so what do you do? Don't display it and don't make it mandatory. So if any of these you don't, these, any of these basic ones you don't want, you can't remove it. You can hide it and unmandatorize it. That's not a word, but you understand what I'm saying. Shipping info, similar to that, you can add extra fields and, and all of that. At the bottom, go ahead and click Save Changes. Yes. That's normal because here you have to dis you have to tell WordPress what are we collecting text, and I selected it and it stays there. It just it doesn't go away. You could switch it to something else. <coughs> it's normal that it stays there. Those are already those are already built in, and it assumes whatever you're going to type into country is going to be a country in the database. Whatever is a zip code is text, actually numbers, but takes it as text. So it doesn't know this brand new field that we created. What should it store? Text. I'm going to save those changes, and one final thing. Then we'll go to the next screen. We can have multiple forms. We can have different checkout forms for different things you're buying. You can attach one form when it's digital products and another form for real products. You would create a new form set. We're not going to do it at the moment, but you could create a new form set populated with different things you're asking for. You use these checkout forms depending on what you're trying to sell. All right, let's go to the marketing tab. Okay, so we've got these concepts in e-commerce. E-commerce concepts. We've got upselling, cross-selling. There's a couple of other ones, but upselling. Recommendation to upgrade to a better product. Cross-selling recommendation to also buy another product. So let's say I'm about to buy um, a TV and it's a 19 inch for $500 or something. And then it's saying, uh, well, if you pay, you know, two hundred dollars more, you can get five more inches on the TV. So it's upselling me. If I buy a little bit more, I mean, if I spend a little bit more, in theory, I get a better product. Cross-selling is often like people that bought this also bought that. You're about to buy this. Why not also buy this? Related. Upselling. Cross-selling. By default, here in WP Commerce, we have the ability to do cross-selling pretty easily. We don't have the ability to do upselling with the built-in WP Commerce. 
So under this marketing screen, that's our first option. Users who bought this also bought. If you turn on that check mark, based on what other people have bought in the same group, it will recommend them, it will cross-sell them, it will try to cross-sell them. You bought this, and other people bought that, don't you want to buy it too? I would recommend to turn it on, because then that's more of a way to reach, or to sell more products to reach more people. So that's very common in e-commerce nowadays to have these recommendations to buy more. We have this share this button and we have also Facebook like button. These sound good but I don't recommend them because the Jetpack social media feature is better. So share this social bookmark will give the users a way to share your product to their Facebook or to their Twitter. And that sounds good, and so does this Facebook one, but the Jetpack one is better. So this is the same issue about trying to do the same thing with two plugins. Either or. Either turn on social sharing in Jetpack or use the e-commerce one. I will say the Jetpack one is better. So you don't need to turn those two on. What I would turn on is how customers found us. So a simple survey will get added um, as a drop-down when they check out. How did you find us? Now, there's no customization, really, but it's going to ask the usual. Uh, did you find us on our website? Did you find us through social media? Did you find us through the radio? And then that's just another way to collect more information for marketing. What's been effective? My, my Twitter efforts have worked because people have said they found me on Twitter. Or my... Uh, email list worked because that's what they selected. RSS, product RSS, don't worry about that. It really doesn't have much bearing for us nowadays. Google Merchant Center, it's kind of advanced to get into, but you have a way to uh, also use the Google product search feature. When you're on Google, you can search for anything, right? You can search for products. If you go through the process of creating the Google Merchant or Google Product Search, when people search for a product on Google, it may be easier for your product to show up on their search results. But it takes some setup that we're not going to really quite get into here. You can follow the link at your own pace to go to google.com merchants, set up the account, I believe it's free, set that all up, and then you, you're going to have your own specific address to help you get found by the Google search, the Google product search. Since it's not a real website, it still won't really work for us, so we can't really use it. But make a note that it may be useful in the future to set up Google product search. the link in the notes, but it's that link there. But it's that link there in the dashboard. The rest of these items here, we can't really do them either because this requires Google Analytics. If you took my social, if you took my SEO class, we talked about setting up Google Analytics. And basically, it's a way for you to use Google to help track the traffic of your site. Since uh, we, we don't really have time to get into that in this class, we can't really talk about it. But there's a link there to go to Google Analytics and set up your account 
and then what's going to happen is you're going to connect Google with your web, with your website and it will help track the traffic to your site for you to decide the most popular page, keywords that are helping you get found, all of that. Is there a plugin for that? Uh, not quite a plugin uh, because once you set up Google Analytics, you plug in your tracking code in that box and then it's done. But uh, there's other uses for Google. Google Analytics and there are plugins for that. One of them is called Monster Insights. Is uh, that Google tracking free? It is. There's a version of it for free and there's a paid version, but the free one works really well. So this uh, simple um, adding your code there will, will get it to work, but if you want more insights and more data and details, we've got the monster insights. So from this screen, uh, we changed a little bit, so click Save Changes. And the last screen is presentation. We looked at import previously. Let's go to presentation. The first thing I'll mention is on the right side, there's this white box, advanced theme settings. If you're going to make changes to the code, of the shopping cart, it asks you to select the screens you're going to edit and then copy them or move them so that you can edit them. This is pretty advanced. We're, we're not going to get to it uh, until the very end of the class, but if we're going to write some custom code, we need to select here, for example, um, when a person is is on their edit profile screen, which is WPSC account edit profile.php. The screen that people see is that file. If we wanted to change the background color, if we wanted to change the fonts of that screen, we would need to select that file, move it into our into our current template, and then we would be able to edit the code of that file. It's kind of advanced, so that's why we're not going to really do it at the moment. But if you understand the code, HTML, CSS, PHP, all of that code, you, you can do that. You can also make a backup of our theme, but the duplicator plugin is better. Then we've got a few options here regarding buttons and products and such. The first item here, button type. Um, the default, the only one we can select is Add to Cart. We could have a way to, to do Buy Now, to quickly let people buy your product. Uh, that requires you set up PayPal Standard. So this default of Add to Cart is fine. People will find the product that they like and then um, add it to the cart and they can add more products and then check out. For advanced features, you can hide that cart button and then program your own custom shopping cart. So for us, we don't really want to do that, so leave it to no. Don't hide the cart. Let people buy the product. We've got a few items here that you can turn on depending what you want to accomplish. Would you like people to give ratings to your products? Maybe that might be useful. Uh, because nowadays, getting advice from other people on a product is very valuable. 
I, I know I look at the opinions and comments of, of people before I buy a product. I, I can't, especially when I'm buying it online, I can't feel it. I don't know what it really looks like. Um, so looking at people's comments and ratings could be helpful. I'm going to turn it on and then we can see what it looks like later. Do I want to show how many of a product I have? Again, that depends on you. Let's say Victor's Bakery. I can always bake more cakes. I can always bake more cookies. I might not need to show an availability. But if these are items that are handmade, one-offs, I only have one copy of that painting, I may want to show that I've got that, that availability only. Next, we've got Display Fancy Purchase. This, isn't, this is the one I would recommend to turn on. Uh, you'll get a nice little pop-up that appears that says, would you like to continue shopping or would you like to go to the cart? If it's off, they kind of have to do the extra step to go to the shopping cart. But if you turn it on, it will remind them at that moment once they add an item to the cart. The item shipping, I would leave that on so that they can see how much they're going to pay for shipping. You put it on no, they won't know how much they're getting charged for shipping until later, and that's kind of annoying for people where they don't know how much extra they're going to pay. Disable link and title. Um, similar to kind of like the blog, let me show here. When we're in the blog, we get a preview of a blog. And if I want to read more, I can click read more or the title of the blog to read more. Once we've got products, we're going to see the same thing. Previews of the products. And I can have a lot more detail of a product with continue reading. That's what this is saying. Um, dis disabling title. This is The default is no meaning, yes, people will be able to click on the title to, to view more of the product. If I don't want them to view more of the product, you turn it on to yes, so it's kind of backwards. It's kind of unintuitive. Yes to read no more, no to yes read more. <laughs> kind of backwards. I would leave the default on most likely because, um, you know, you get, you get a preview of the product and if people want to see more, they can click to read more. But if you're able to get across the whole point of your product on that one screen, then you can turn it off. Add quantity field. You probably want, yes, here, I want to be able to sell two of those items at once. I don't want them to have to add to cart, and then again click add to cart. I want them to select, I want to buy six of them. Reasons why you may turn that off is you're only selling one, one at a, one thing at a time, one sculpture at a time that I'm selling. The default view of what this will look like is a grid. I'm sorry, it's a it's a list. If we wanted a not a list, but the default view, we have list view, grid view, two other ways to view the the products, but we can't select them until you until you purchase the other feature of the cart. So we're going to be fine with the built-in product display, but if you wanted a grid or some other way, you have to upgrade. Uh, I'm not sure what the price is. I think it's like $99, but you get more features besides that. Gold cart, they give you grid view gallery, demos, more payment gateways, so using more ways to pay. And what's the price on that? Yeah, $99. So it's fine. We've only got one view for our products we can manage. It's also dependent on our theme. Since we can't use the grid view, then these view settings don't apply. Do you want to show our categories as a list or something more interesting? List 
the, the more interesting view is already on, so list is off. This is another one that's kind of backwards. If I want the list view, I say yes. If I want the default view, which already looks nice, I can click yes. Show which products to show, select which products to show, don't worry about it just yet. We don't have any categories and such, so it doesn't make sense. But we're going to have a way to display specific products on specific screens. Sort products by. Here you will decide what you like here. Alphabetically, sort them by price. Sort them about the order of when they were uploaded. Or allow me to drag and drop the order I want. So I'll just put price. And we have ascending from A to Z, or descending from Z to A. Usually customers set average choice as well, like how they want to yes. get the world. Our default here is that it will be in this order, but then they will still be able to sort. Okay. Yes. Do you suggest we should upload some not really. Um, we, we don't really see what these look like at the moment, sure, but once we add our product, then we'll be able to check it. So if we added a product, it would still be the effort of turning an option, go check it, come back, change it, go check it. So I don't see too much of a difference of doing it before or after. Breadcrumbs is better to show perhaps. If I go to um, most stores and I look at a product, uh, let's say um, tripod. I'm going to see tripods. I'm just going to look at whatever tripod. Um, the breadcrumbs are going to be in what section or department am I? What's the path that I use to get here? I'm in the camera department, part of the bestsellers department, that sort of thing. So the breadcrumb is, where did I come from? What part of the site am I in? And so that's breadcrumbs. What is the path where I came from? We can turn it on, and then we can see how it works after we've got products. Do I want to display all my products in a row? Do I want one product per group? We'll leave it as is for the moment. Are we doing subcategories? We'll say no at the moment. Um, a product is going to be in a category. This is saying, would you like to display instead the product and the category instead of just the title? I think that's too much text on screen, so I would say no, default, display featured products above. We can have featured products. I'm going to sell uh, cakes and cookies and so forth. But let's say I really want to sell uh, oatmeal cookies. So we'll see later. We can make a product as a featured product, and it will appear first before any other product. If I have oatmeal cookies alphabetically, oatmeal would happen after chocolate chip. But if I set a product as a featured, O, oatmeal, will, have, will appear before chocolate chip. I'll say yes. Let's turn on featured products. Um, that'll be up to you to decide your featured products, but we'll see how it works. Cart location, we have a widget. Remember I said that widgets come from themes. They also come from plugins. So we have a few new theme, a uh, few new widgets actually, that we can add to our sidebars. So we're saying, where would you like the cart displayed? On an actual page, under as a widget, drop shop, which is an extra feature that you have to go off and get the gold cart for, or manual if you want to write your own code to make the cart appear. postage and tax. That's basically how would you like to show off your um, your your product, the, the product as well as saying that the words plus postage and tax.
we're going to create categories and we're going to write descriptions for categories. Would you like to display the text of the category to people? Maybe. I'll turn that on and we'll see what it looks like and then we can change it. Do I want to display thumbnails for my products? Sure. Do I want to show how many products are in a category I created? Sure. And should I display my categories as grids or as a regular list? We'll see it on the, the grid and then we'll refine it. Here we've got sizes for our thumbnails and products. When we look at our, our products, right now they're going to be square sizes, 148 by 148 pixels. Um, for the regular size, so thumbnail size, the regular image size. I'm going to say uh, these sizes are fine, but usually these are square shaped. The problem here is, okay, crop thumbnails. No. Choosing yes means that the thumbnails are cropped to exact dimensions. So if I'm uploading <coughs> pictures that are landscape, I've said force everything to be a square. So my landscape pictures will be shrunk down to a square if I leave it on no. It'll distort it, maybe. If I activate yes and I upload landscape pictures, they'll get cropped to be squares, which still may look weird. So either of these, I would say to some degree, doesn't matter. What matters more is what are the sizes you're going to set your pictures to. So here's some sizes. I'll say that the product thumbnails, I'll keep them as a square. Categories, keep them as a square. But the actual images, maybe I want to show them more like a rectangle and a little larger. You'll have to figure out what sizes you want depending on your theme and your products. But here it'll show our pictures a little larger, our main picture. I want to show thumbnails of my products, so yes. If I don't, if I want to do more advanced effects, I can click no. <coughs> Lightbox effect, um, leave that yes, don't worry about it, just leave that yes. But then lightbox script. You can click on a picture and it'll show you a larger version. That's the lightbox effect. If you select no, if you click on the picture, it won't show you a larger version. That's why we want yes there. But then what kind of style, what kind of design? Color box and thick box look both pretty well, but I like color box a little better shows your picture in a nice larger format with a back and forward button and a description. We've got pagination. When I'm looking at a page of results, if I'm looking at all the tripods here, I look at tripods and then I want next page. Next page, previous page. I've got 400 pages of results here on Amazon. That's pagination. the default is no pagination. So I've got 40 products, all 40 are shown in a one long line. I would recommend, yes, break it up into a few screenfuls. What would you recommend? How many do you want to show people at once before you go to page two or three? Five, ten, whatever you'd like. Let's try five. Over here we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 at a time. Amazon shows us 19 at a time before we get to page 2. And Amazon then also has, okay, I've looked at these, I don't like them, what's next? I have to go all the way back down to the bottom to go to the next page. I don't quite like that. I know that the product that I looked at yesterday was on page two, so I have to scroll all the way back down to find it. Question? Well, would this help on a handheld device then if I have maybe six instead of 19? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to download faster to the person's computer or mobile device mm -hmm. because there's less to download, and then they you can choose. Yeah. 
I would recommend for the position here that we choose both. Give us next page, previous page, both at the top of this page and at the bottom of the page. I know for myself I get annoyed when I have to scroll all the way down to find the next button. I want to see it early on at the top and at the bottom perhaps. And then the last item, um, I wouldn't worry about this one. This requires for you to go off to the website intensedebate.com and to set up an account there to have even more powerful commenting features. But the built-in WordPress commenting system is just fine. People will be able to comment on your products and rate and review your products. If you want even more advanced features, you have to go off to that site. Intense Debate. I don't know if this is free. I've never used it. So we'll say no, and we'll click Save Changes. So there are a lot of settings here that we looked at last time and this time. Uh, you really only have to set them once, and then once you're happy with them, you can leave them as is. Some of this about the presentation, you may change it a couple of times, but other, other things like shopping or shipping and taxes and all of that, you most likely won't set those very often. One more thing, then we'll take a break. You may have noticed at the top here, allow e WP e-commerce to track statistics. So um, that's optional. You get 20% if you, if you do allow. If that's bothering you, you can turn it on or off. Uh, this is then also saying about the theme. This is, so this is the same thing about this advanced theme here. So if you were wondering what are those two items at the top, we can just ignore them. You can click that to ignore. Maybe for that one I will say let's click that ignore button because if we are going to do anything advanced, we have to come back to the screen anyway to do it. So I don't want that to take up space at the top. I'll click here to ignore. And because this is a testing site, uh, I'm not going to allow the statistics. I'm just closing those so I have more space at the top. Save. Yes, remember to click Save at the bottom. Right, let's visit the dashboard. I'm sorry, let's visit site. Yes. Do not allow, yeah. If you go back to our visit site, uh, we've got the products page, your account, etc. If you've got a copy of my file, you've got a menu bar that looks the same as mine, which I think is too cluttered, too many items. Uh, we're going to take a break. So your, your, your task is, before you take a break, see if you can figure out how to do this again. These drop-downs. Blog has a drop-down menu. I want you to put the account, transactions, and checkout as drop-downs of product. Do that, then take a break. 7, uh, 6, 7.06, we'll take a break until 7.16.